I wanted to do a video talking about the Canadian C3 and the British Light Anti-Gas Respirators in my All About Different Gas Mask series. So, basically, how did a mask like this one I've got in the satchel, how did it go from this to this? Both are fairly similar, as you can see, but there are differences which I'll get into. Um, but, you know, I thought people might be interested in how did something like this improved to become this because it's quite an interesting sort of series of masks. So, nearing the end of World War II, Britain decided it needed a more updated sort of infantry mask because the older British masks, like the Mark IV or Mark V general service respirator, were masks connected to a hose that ran to a big filter in a, you know, satchel. Um, so it was quite heavy and sort of cumbersome. It was a good mask, but obviously they thought it needed updating. The Germans for quite a while had been wearing smaller masks with filters directly attached to the masks, so Britain wanted to have a go at doing a similar thing like that. And they also wanted, you know, to be able to change the filter easily. On the Mark IV and V masks, you'd have to, to change the filter, have a big spare filter canister, then you'd have to uncrimp the wire on the hose to take your old filter off and then crimp it back on to put the new filter on. It wasn't really practical. So they thought, what we want is a lightweight gas mask that can be carried in a smaller pouch, um, take a filter that screws directly onto the mask and be more practical, and you know, all around be a good thing. So this is what they came up with, the light anti-gas anti respirator, or the LAG. Um, this one was made in 1944. In January 1944 and it also says on there NOL2 WNG 1944 so WNG I assume is the rubber company that made this one and L2 maybe might be the size but here we go there's also another stamp for 1944 on the bottom there although that one's dated the 10th uh, 31st of October so Halloween 1944 so, for whatever reason, there's more than one stamp on it. This one was sold as surplus to Denmark, like a lot of these were, and the Danes later sold them as surplus when they were finished using them. So it's a 60mm filter, as would become standard for a while. America, with the M9, used 60mm filters, um, until they decided they were going to go down the cheek filter route, and everybody else went to 40mm filters. But the mask itself is practical and lightweight. And unless you happen to be left-handed, the mask is practical. If you were left-handed, they said, keep your old mask. Um, this is for right-handed shooters. So, yes, the mask is lightweight for a World War II mask. You know, I haven't actually done a weighing of it, but I assume it would be under a kilo quite easily. Um, you know, which is good for weight-wise. With the filter on it, be a bit heavier. But, you know, it's comfortable enough to wear. Now, one thing of this is the rubber is r relatively thick on this mask compared to old British World War II masks. So the rubber is thicker but less supple. I have tested this and this does still work if you've got a working 60mm filter on it. So, you know, for what this mask is, it's very good. The inside, however, is very simple. No Tissot system and just a straightforward exhale valve there. So what happened after this one is they did further improvements and there was one that had this kind of metal nipple here. What that did exactly, I'm unsure because I don't think it had a voice diaphragm in, but that would be the lag mark too. Britain continued using the lag masks until the early 1960s when they changed the S6 respirator which was a massive sort of leap forward in terms of respirator design. Now Canada uh, was still a Commonwealth nation and Canada, if you know much about you know the Canadian military history, used a lot of British equipment. So what Canada did was basically they had a load of these masks for a while and then they thought how do we improve them? So what you have here is essentially what would have been the lag mark 3 but they called it the C3. Um, I don't think the C3, you know, name, although it be implied it's the third Canadian mask, I guess, I don't think it had anything to do with it being the lag mark 3. I just assume there would be a C1 and a C2 gas mask before it. This was replaced by the C4 gas mask. So, what's been improved? The rubber's thinner and more supple. You should hopefully be able to see this flexes very easily, so it's comfortable on the face. It's got a very similar head strap system. Not much, you know, advantage or disadvantage with that. Filter intake in the same place but you've got a voice diaphragm on this one. Your exhale valve, as far as I'm aware, is the bit directly in the middle, and then you've got the um, voice diaphragm as the metal grate, the metal grate vibrating when you talk, working as a simple voice diaphragm. Simple and effective, not as good as some of the later master voice diaphragms, but works better than just simply having an exhale valve. So, so the mask is pretty similar in many ways. 
it's just been made far lighter you can hear people talking in it more clearly but one of the major changes is there's now an oral nasal cup inside the mask if I can fold this back I will demonstrate that to you hopefully that's visible there so although it's not really got a Tissot system the air comes in from the filter intake and it goes around the oral nasal cup hitting the lenses you then inhale it from this side of the oral nasal cup it goes in and you can exhale it so what they've done is they've basically made the mask a lot lighter, more comfortable, more practical. Because that's the thing you'll see a lot of nations do. They take somebody's design, they improve upon it rather than developing something a lot more expensive themselves. Um, so for example, Finland did that with the M61 when they improved upon the M9. Serbia definitely did that when they improved upon the M9 or the Yugo M1 when they had that. With a mask that became 40mm and lighter weight. So the C3 is very interesting, it's the end of the LAG series as was. So basically you had the lag Mark 1 and Mark 2 of Britain, Canada took the lag Mark 2 and made this. I've heard from some people that Britain did have a lag Mark 3 which is very similar to the Canadian C3 but I've not really seen any evidence of it. That's not to say it didn't exist but I can't verify it's true unless I actually see pictures or hold one you know to know it's a real thing. But yeah, Canadian C3 very good mask, probably the best of the 60mm masks in my opinion. Um, either that or the Finnish M61 I'd say, but you know, this is an interesting thing, you know, developed near the end of World War II, then the weight is reduced, made more practical by Canada, and you've got an all-round good mask. So yeah, that's all about the lag or light anti-gas respirator series that ended with the Canadian C3.